Okay, this is part two, version three of my Tough Torque K46 transaxle left axle replacement project. In, version, in part one, the uh, transaxle was inverted, the sump cover was off. I showed how to remove the axle, put in a new one. I obviously have done that. I put uh, RTV red silicon gasket on the sump cover. I let it set up for a few minutes. I put it on. I bolted it on. I removed. This is the uh, vent uh, plug. This is the fill plug. Both these plugs were removed. But removing the fill plug, take a screwdriver, put it under the edge, hit it with a hammer, and it pops off. When I did that, this original fill plug was not damaged in any way, it's still usable, and I put it back on. So from this part, I took the uh, Tough Torque uh, transaxle fluid, I filled up to one inch below this lip here, where this sits. That's what their online procedure calls for, filled up to one inch depth. Uh, once I did that, I let it sit overnight to make sure that there was no leakage in the gasket. And I can see the red gasket all the way around, so I know that it flowed outward. I know it made a good seal. There's no evidence of leakage. So now the next step is to bleed the air from the internal uh, pump mechanism. They're, they have an online procedure how to do that. Their procedure says take the transaxle, Stall it back in the tractor, start the engine, lift the, lift the wheels off the ground with a jack, start the engine so it rotates, and uh, operate this uh, bypass valve, which in my Husqvarna tractor is attached to this rod. The rod extends out the back of the tractor, so it's in this position, it's bypassed, and you can push the tractor by hand. And if it's in this position, the valve allows fluid to go into the pump and the pump operates the hydraulic motor which turns the axles. So they want to go back and forth a few times as this is turning and that allows all the void spaces that might have air to fill with oil. So, but using a drill it's a lot easier. This is the throttle that's attached to the, the foot lever. I put this piece of scrap metal in here to hold it in an open position. So I would be on the tractor with the engine running and my foot on the throttle. Then we got to turn the shaft and we're going to use an electric drill. I'm going to take, this is part of the, the uh, pulley and fan system. This is not a nut, it's a, it has a hex head and a spline which just goes on top of the shaft. So I'm just going to throw a washer on here, oops, put some, in this case, uh, three quarter inch nuts just to take up some space, maybe another washer, put that on, and this engages the splines. Take my drill, this is a 7-8 socket electric drill with an adapter from the hex bit to uh, a socket. In this case it's half inch, you don't need half inch, but I've got it, that's what I'm using. Put it on here and spin it. This is in the, the bypass valve is... Uh, open so there's no fluid getting into the pump so now when I close it it'll turn and I can reverse direction and do this a few times
Now the first time I did this with the drill, the axle was not turning, which meant that it had to be bled. And once I, once I did it a few times, like I say, you only need to do it a few times, it, it filled the, the pump and the, uh, the motor was operating properly, so obviously the axle is turning. So we're pretty much done. All we do now is to reassemble. I've cleaned this with, whoops, dropped it on the floor. I used some CLP, which is really good for rust removal. I squirted it on the, uh, the shaft, took a toothbrush, worked it up and down, made it nice and clean. I took this spacer, same thing, I cleaned it off, so everything's nice and clean. Throw this on, throw the pulley wheel on, put this uh, spring washer on, put the fan on, and with the spring you push it down, you push it down. And then I have the C-clamp, which has to go on, put that in place. Now, before I before I do that final step, I said in part one of my video, oh yeah, we have to remove this. Take that out of the way. I said in the video, uh, part one, that if you took the transaxle, flipped it upside down, put it on blocks, you didn't have to take this off. But you really should take it off, because if you don't, <coughs> You're going to have trouble with the. You can probably get you can probably get this off okay, with this still on, but you're going to have problems getting oil in here. That's going to be a mess. So follow the procedure. Take this off. Flip it upside down. Do whatever you have to do. Put it back on the way it is now. So let's go back here. Put the spring washer or bushing. Put that on. And I have to get my uh, C-clamp tool to open it up and put this in place. So once I do that, I'm not going to show. I'm not going to show that. It's pretty obvious how you do it. Put that in place, and then we're done. We're done. I'm ready to reinstall the transaxle on the tractor. That's it. I hope. Uh, I hope you seen that it's not a difficult process, easy to do, but using the drill for uh, uh, bleeding the air is to me far easier than putting it on the tractor and manipulating this. You really need two guys. You need somebody in the back to manipulate this valve as you're manipulating the th th throttle. So this works really well. Okay, that's it. Like I'm saying, it's a simple procedure, easy to do, and uh, there's other videos showing how to disassemble the tire inside, the valves, the motor, total rebuild. That wasn't the purpose here. The purpose was to replace the bent axle. Okay, that's it. Good luck.